Hey guys! In today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to use the Illustrator Pen Tool. This is a video I wanted to make for quite a while since it covers the very basics of Illustrator and it gives you the tools you need to be able to create vector-based designs. This is typically what you'll be using when creating professional grade logos for typography and for screen printing on t-shirts for example. So this is one of the most important skills to have as a graphic designer. Before we start, I just want to thank our friends at Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers over 16,000 classes and projects on a wide variety of topics, ranging from graphic design to finance, game design, illustration, photography, and many other subjects. All the classes are taught by seasoned professionals in their respective industries, like Jessica Hitch and Aaron Draplin, for example, who I'm sure some of you are familiar with if you're into lettering or graphic design in general. Now here's just a quick glimpse of all the Adobe Illustrator classes you'll be able to follow once you get familiar with the pen tool. Make sure you guys stick around to get a free 2 month membership so you can check it out for yourselves and get unlimited access to all the premium content Skillshare has to offer. Alright, let's get into this. Now at first the pen tool might seem a little bit hard to get a full grasp on, but it's really pretty simple once you understand the basic principles behind it. So I created this guide to help you guys gradually get familiar with the pen tool until you're comfortable enough to use it on your own and start creating your own personal designs with it. You'll find a link in the video description to download the Illustrator file. This is completely free and it'll help you guys follow along the tutorial. Feel free to pause the video at any given time to follow along and resume whenever you feel ready. Alright, now that you've downloaded the Illustrator file, we can get into the very basics. The pen tool works by creating paths which are connected by control points. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So for this part, we'll focus only on geometric shapes made out of straight paths. I'll start by creating an open path, which means that not all the points are connected to make a closed shape, like this pentagon for example. Up here I made some guides indicating where to place your control points in order to create these specific shapes, so you guys have a reference to fall back on if you're unsure about where your points should be. At this stage it's pretty straightforward, but when we'll start creating curves, these will come in handy. Now let's select our pen tool. I'll set the fill color to none, and I'll go with this bright pink for the stroke. You can use any color, I just want something that stands out. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and place a point. As you can see my path is now anchored to this point and I can move freely around it. Then I'm going to connect it to this corner up here and from there I'll move to the next point down here and press escape when I'm done. Now we can move on to this next shape and repeat the process. This time we'll connect all the points and make it a proper closed path. You can start wherever you want and simply connect each corners with one another. Now you see this little circle right here next to my cursor. This indicates that I'm about to connect the last point and close my path. And by the way, these shapes don't need to be perfect, just try and be as precise as you can. Okay, now let's go to this last shape here. So again, I'll create my first point here, but this time I'll hold down shift. It'll make it so that my path can only move in perfect 45 degree angles around my starting point. You can see as I move around my control point that the path will snap to the closest vertical, horizontal or 45 degree angle. This can come in really handy when creating shapes in Illustrator. So let's just go ahead and connect all the points holding down shift. Alright, so now we know how to create straight paths. Feel free to start over until you feel comfortable to move on to the next part. Okay, so we covered straight lines, but paths can also be curved. The vector curves created with the pen tool are called Bezier curves. Now I'll show you how to create them. We'll start with this single curve right here. I'm going to go ahead and create my starting point on this end here, but this time I'm going to click and hold. Now as I drag my cursor, you can see I have these two handles I can rotate around my point. The way I position these handles will determine the angle and the shape of my curve. Again, if I hold shift, I'll be able to drag these handles in a perfect vertical or horizontal line. So I'm going to drag this handle up to this guide I created. Again, you can rely on the figures I made up here to figure out where to place your handle. 
Now essentially you want to create your curves with as little points as possible. This will generally translate in smoother looking curves. Now as you can tell I have this curve pad to work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect it to the end of the curve over here. Now my curve doesn't have the right shape but that's because I still have in place the handle on this point. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my handle to the guide and now I'm left with a nice and even curve. Again it doesn't matter if it's not perfect but if you do want to correct your curve you can just hold command or control on PC and select a control point or a handle and move it around until you're satisfied. Alright now we're ready to move on to a continuous curve. So we'll repeat the same process but this time we'll just keep going. I'll start at the same point here and go up with my handle. Then I want to place my second point right here in the middle and drag my handle down and then keep going. We could go on like this forever. Now let's try another kind of curve. This time instead of going straight up and down with the handles, we'll do a 45 degree angle. I'll drag this one up to the guide holding shift, but this time we're going at an angle. And then I'll go to the second point and do the same, and pull up to this guide. So now we have a curve with two control points instead of three. So this is just another way to create curves depending on the shape you want. You can also make freehand curves without holding down shift if you're going for a more inconsistent type of shape like this, but for now we're just going to focus on creating curves with straight handles. Now in some instances you'll want to be able to convert a curve into an angled corner or a pointy tip. For example on this drop pin, we have all these smooth curves and then we have this sharp tip. So I'll show you how to go about it. I'll just start creating my shape. Now you can start wherever. I'm just going to go ahead and start up here and make my way down to the tip following the guides. Now as you can see this bottom handle here isn't reaching the guide but I'll adjust it once I created my point down here. So I'm just going to create the point and drag down and then I'll adjust the handle by holding command to bring up the direct selection tool and dragging this handle down. Remember to hold shift to keep a straight line. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and adjust this point down here to get the curve I want. So I'll bring this handle right up to the guide. Now I want to keep going, but I'm kind of stuck because handles will only let me create curves. So what we're going to do is we'll break this curve by keeping alt pressed and grabbing this handle. Now we can bring it up to the guide. Then I'll move up to create the same curve on the left side. I can then proceed to close my shape up here. Now I added an extra challenge to this part. So once you feel comfortable recreating the drop pin with the guides, you can move on to this figure here and try tracing it without guides. Again, feel free to go over this part as many times as you need until you feel comfortable moving on. Alright guys, now's the time to put everything we learned to the test. So I've created this squirrel shape which is made out of straight paths, a bunch of curves, and some broken paths. I also included curves that weren't made with straight vertical or horizontal handles because sometimes you just won't be able to get the curve you want just by using straight handles and that's fine. Now let's try tracing this guy. I would say try and trace without looking at the reference too much and just refer to it when you feel stuck. This should help you get a better grasp on where to put your points and how to drag your handles. I'm going to trace along but I'll just speed it up a little bit so the video doesn't last forever.
And guys, remember that you can always edit your curves after making them so they don't have to be perfect on the spot. All right guys, so our shape is done. Now if you had a hard time at first, it's all good. I know it can be a bit frustrating when starting out, but trust me, just keep practicing and at some point it'll just kick in for you and you'll get the hang of it. So just keep going at it until you feel comfortable. Now I know a lot of you guys following me are into lettering as well and you'll be using the pen tool to create digital lettering. So I've added this last section to show you guys how I create letters using everything we just learned. There's a lot of different ways to create letters in Illustrator, but this is just how I prefer to do it. I essentially create each part of the letter as a separate shape. That way I can easily move things around afterwards if I want to tweak the letter. For instance, with this B, I'll create three separate shapes. The top curve, the bottom curve, and the bar. Again, I'm just going to trace along, but I'll speed it up a little bit. And by the way, I barely ever go right into Illustrator and freestyle. So if you've watched some of my speed art videos, you'll see that I always start by sketching my piece with pen and paper. So I have a pretty good idea of the shape and composition of the word I'm going for. I find this to be a much easier workflow than to just jump into Illustrator and start tracing. So I really encourage you guys to sketch your work beforehand. It'll make it a lot easier for you. All right guys, so we've covered all the fundamental steps. Now, the pen tool takes a bit of practice, so I know I keep repeating myself, but feel free to go over these exercises as many times as you need until you feel like you've mastered all the steps. Think of this as a primer to digital lettering or logo creation. Once you feel comfortable using the pen tool, you'll have the foundation you need to create pretty much anything in Adobe Illustrator. Creating logos in type is what I personally enjoy the most when it comes to graphic design, which is why I wanted to share this skill with you guys in the hopes that you'll enjoy it as much as I do. I'm always pushing to get better at it by learning new skills and techniques to try and perfect my craft. For example, right now I'm learning the process of customizing typography with this class by Aaron Draplin. This guy is pretty much the ultimate reference when it comes to vector work and customizing type and he has a very natural and captivating way of teaching which I really enjoy. I've also just started this class by George Bochua on how to design a modern style logo. George is pretty much a veteran when it comes to brand identity and digital illustration, so I'm having a ton of fun learning about his techniques and what his workflow is like when creating a logo. You'll find thousands of classes just like these on Skillshare, so I strongly suggest you guys check it out if you want to step up your graphic design game. Make sure to click the link in the video description to get your free 2-month Skillshare membership. This means you'll have access to over 16,000 premium online classes completely free, which I think is a pretty sweet deal. Alright guys, so as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.